Hello and welcome to part two of our cube shaped shenanigans. Now, if you haven't seen part one, I'd recommend starting there because we saved this machine from its burnt up original VRM module. And when we opened it up, we found kind of a very rare upgrade inside. So I'll link that in the description below. But today, we're gonna see if we can't take care of this busted hard drive and actually figure out some way to get sound out of this thing. So stay tuned. Today's Macintosh shenanigans are brought to you by PCBWay. So many retro computing projects that we've come to depend on started with prototyping via PCBWay.com. In no small part due to their great pricing and turnarounds as fast as 24 hours. Just take a look through their shared project sections where you can find absolute gems like this amazing entire Apple One clone. So if you have any PCB needs, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. So at the end of the last video, I asked you guys what you thought we should do next with this cube, because now that the VRM is sorted and the 1.2 gigahertz sonnet seems to be working just fine with its new repaste, we definitely need to address this hard drive situation. And by far the number one thing you thought we should do was toss an SSD in here. And of course we could do that with just a regular old SATA SSD with an adapter, but I got to thinking, I wonder if there's some more interesting things we could do. For example, what if we put an M SATA SSD in there with uh, a short throw little half height, half size adapter, and then took that IDE, laptop IDE into a full size IDE with this adapter and mounted that in here instead. Will it work? Is it overkill? Is it unnecessarily complicated? I don't know, but why don't we find out? And then the other thing we need to do is figure out some way to get sound out of here because the G4 Cube is the only Mac to not have a built-in speaker. Instead, this thing came with a USB amplifier which connected to two little round Harman Kardon speakers. So I don't have the amplifier or the speakers, but I do have a couple of other USB external sound adapters that all claim they do work with Mac OS. So let's see if they work. So like we saw before, this thing would normally be very easy to take apart. You just kind of push down on the handle in here and it lifts up, but mine of course is kind of broken there and I don't know how you would actually fix it. So you kind of have to finagle it. But once you got it, it lifts straight out. And as you can see, when I put this back together, I left out one of the posts, which was actually in the instructions for the new VRM module, because putting this in here would actually touch the electronics on here with the metal of this post, and obviously that's not good. So this is still very structurally sound with only three out of the four posts. And here's the space that we're dealing with. Right in here, you can see this is the hard drive right next to the heatsink here. So there's not a ton of space in there, and I have heard of people who have had issues with other SATA SSD adapters, but the SSD is way smaller, so that's gonna fit in there no problem. We just have to make sure that the adapter that we choose has enough clearance and that the PCB for the adapter is not too tall. And I guess we'll see what that means when we actually dig into here. And then this void here, of course, is where the DVD-ROM should be, but there is no DVD-ROM in here. So that's the other thing we need to figure out is what are we gonna do with all of this extra space for activities?
And we just have to remove this bracket on the side. So I was thinking kind of a funny thing to do would be to try to use as little space as possible. And the smallest hard drive you can think of is an M SATA drive like this Dogfish 120 gig. And for that, we could mount it in this half size M SATA to 2.5 inch IDE adapter. And then convert that to full size IDE using this super minimal adapter here. Is that over engineering, over complicated? Probably, but it's also pretty cool. And I don't know, could help with airflow probably. And if it doesn't work, we can always go to our fallback, just a regular SATA SSD. There we go. I don't know about you, but I think that's adorable. All right, that's connected in there, but as I was putting it in, the pins fell out of it, but that's not such a big deal as long as this works and hopefully it does work. So I don't know, let's give it a shot. All right, well, that's a good sign, I guess, but for some reason, it still does not want to boot off of external firewire. Or maybe if I had the drive turned on, it would work. Hey, we're booting. All right, I assume this is the Tiger installer, although I have a lot of different installers on here, but let's see if we can install. First, we'll pop into disk utility and just make sure that the, oh yeah, look at that. 119.2 gig Dogfish SSD. We'll call that Max SATA because of course that's what M SATA stands for. And partition it. Not to jinx myself, but I can't believe this is working on the first try. All right, well, we are installing Mac OS, I think, Tiger onto the M SATA, which is going through two different adapters and seems to be working fine. So I'll let this install. All right, well, install successful. And I think I'm definitely gonna add this new fan in there and replace the one that it came with because it's making some weird kind of just clicking noise instead of spinning. It starts out spinning and then stops and then just goes click, click, click. And I'm sure that's not good. All right, we're into the silent intro movie because there is no speaker. All right, check it out. We are in our SSD. So we have Mac OS 10.4 with our 1.2 gigahertz PowerPC G4 and 1.4 gigs of RAM. And our Firewire is working fine. We have all of our installers here from that Firewire SSD that I built. So I guess let's 
shut this thing down and put that other fan in here. Now, unfortunately, in order to get to the fan, we have to take this whole thing apart again because it's underneath the motherboard. And unlike last time, now this thing came off from the heatsink and it was attached via some thermal foil here and must have been like glued in place, but it is now loose. So, geez, probably I'll have to put some new thermal compound between these two pieces here. Now getting the fan out is still a little bit tricky because there's two screws above the heatsink here, but there's also two screws underneath that you have to go all the way down in there to get. Now, fortunately, we do have our extendable screwdriver, so it's not really gonna be a problem, but I'm gonna take this hard drive back out and see if we can't also mount that a little better since we're in here anyway. And for the hard drive, I've attached this to the original sled here. So this will secure it on at least one side and still allow this to connect because there's no other screw holes that would actually let this still line up with the cable that's in there. All right, that's mounted in there pretty securely and that's not gonna move around. It's not you know, super tight because it's just this bracket sled here, but you know, it's not like we're carrying this thing around. It's certainly not going to move out of place and I don't think it's ever gonna to touch the heat sink here. And that's some pretty good airflow we have in here now. And then you guys had some great suggestions of what to put in the void of the drive bay where the DVD used to be, uh, including nothing because you know, who needs DVDs anymore? And a lot of you actually suggested trying to find a replacement DVD for it, but that's pretty difficult. So one idea I had was to put like an SD card reader or something in here, but I don't have an SD card reader on hand that's IDE, but I do have a CF card reader. And I'm thinking it's gonna fit pretty well because the CF card actually is the perfect thickness to come through. and come right out the top of the cube. But I'm not quite sure because it's kind of ugly like that and it, it wouldn't be the easiest thing to actually mount inside. I'd have to figure out some kind of a bracket so it's not just wobbling all around, but I think we might just test putting this CF card in that bay and see if that's convenient and just make sure that this CF card reader even works. Okay, I've got it repasted and pretty much back together and I've got our CF card reader plugged into the IDE down there. So let's turn it on and see if it explodes. All right, it does not like to boot with that CF card thing installed, so let's try without. Yeah, boots right up and I can hear that fan running and actually it is not the quietest fan I've ever heard. So maybe I'll have to switch that out for like a knock to a man. That thing boots up fast. Look at that. It was like seconds. Actually, this fan doesn't seem to be working right either. It's just making like a weird clicking noise. It came on for a second when I first started it, but now just listen to this.
What is that? So I picked up this IDE micro SD card reader. So let's see how this thing works in there. Okay, it does not like to start up with that adapter installed and it's gotta be something to do with the master and slave settings, but there's no jumpers on it, so I guess that's not gonna work. Yeah, and without this thing installed, it starts up and it's stable. And yeah, that's unfortunate. So I'm gonna update this and I guess we'll put this cube back together and see if we can get some audio out of it. But if you guys have a solution for an SD card reader that works on IDE that has jumper settings on it, please let me know in the comments below because I think it would be really cool to put one of those in where the DVD would have been. And the fan was still making horrible noises even though it did wind up turning on while I was doing the update. So I know the fan works, it just makes that terrible clicking noise. And just to make sure it was the fan and not something else, I hooked up this Noctua, even though it's the wrong size, but this fan does not make any noise. So I think I'm just going to have to get a different fan that fits in this cube, which I actually haven't been able to find in like a Noctua, but I think I did find a Be Quiet one that does work. All right, I've got everything back together, and the last thing I'm gonna try is to get audio out of this thing. So I have this little Sabrent USB audio adapter, which I actually think looks very Mac Cube-like. So hopefully this thing works. Let's get some speakers and try this out. Okay, I've got this very nice pair of not at all matching USB powered speakers, which are connected via the 3.5 millimeter jack to that Sabrent USB audio amplifier. So let's see if we bong. All right, no bong. The volume's turned up. Hey, we've got sound. Hey, look at that. Our cheapo Amazon audio USB adapter thing works. So I'll link that in the description below in case you have a cube with no audio amplifier of your own. That's very exciting. All right, so check this out. About this Mac, we have 10.4.11 on our 1.2 gigahertz PowerPC G4 with 1.5 gigs of RAM, the max for this machine, running on our mSATA drive, which is honestly the fastest SSD I've ever felt in a Power Mac. And this fan is kind of annoying. It's super loud in here and clicky. Kind of reminds me of an old hard drive, which is funny, but definitely need to find a new fan for this thing. But in the meantime, I want to check our go-to now that we have sound on here. I want to see if we can play the Mac Yak podcast. So if you'll remember back in my Beige Beast, Beige G3, G4 project, which I'll link down below, I actually was able to play the Mac Yak podcast on YouTube using that beige G3 with the one gigahertz G4 processor. So let's try it now on our 1.2 gigahertz G4 cube. And I'm guessing it's not gonna be great because the video card in this thing is not good. And I am definitely open to suggestions on a new video card for this cube you guys have already given me some good ones, but I haven't quite found one yet on eBay that will work. And I'm definitely open to flashing a card. All right, and you guys should definitely subscribe to the Mac Yak podcast. They are almost at a thousand subscribers. And honestly, this is my favorite podcast. I listen to this every week. 
All right, YouTube actually loads pretty quickly for this kind of machine. Click on Mac Yak 89 from September 17th. It's trying to play and it's pulling up the chat replay and everything. Oh, look at that. Let's just make sure quality is down. One forty four P sounds about right. Subscriber, and then all of a sudden, head four. I, you know, <laughs> so I have to say, I really enjoyed that. Tomorrow. Hey, well, check that out. It's working. Well, it's a slideshow, but the audio works perfectly. And I even have chat. Of course, I just scrolled, and scrolling is a bit slow. All right, well, color me impressed. We have full YouTube at a slideshow, but perfectly listenable on this Power Mac G4 Cube that only ever came in 450 and 500 megahertz, which of course would never play YouTube. So I'm actually gonna end this video on good news for once. We have a working G4 1.2 gigahertz maxed out cube playing YouTube. So as far as what's next for this machine, uh, video card for sure, and then still have to figure out something to go in here. So if you guys have any ideas on What's wrong with that SD card reader? Why that didn't work? I'd appreciate that. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And check out the Mac Yak podcast, which I'll link in the description below. I'll see you next time. And a special thanks to Sorta Eclectic, Chris, and Spike, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters for helping make this video possible.